So where is the field moving? Um, I think the ASH meeting was a largely uh, an evolutionary meeting. Um, we didn't see any of our paradigms totally overturned um, this time. Um, what are the themes? Uh, one very clearly is um, exploration of novel, novel combinations. Um, Venita Clax and BTK doublets, uh, Venita Clax, BTK and antibody triplets. I don't believe that any of those are yet ready for prime time. Yes, they're exciting. Yes, the rationale is strong. Yes, the early responses are encouraging, but the really two issues that need to be sorted out. What is the optimal duration of treatment? Um, that is still um, unclear. And personally, before we go to um, definitive, um, very large studies, I think that needs to be um, better defined and MRD, serial MRD will guide that. The second question is um, that of sequencing and potential compromise of um, subsequent responsiveness. If we're exposing our patients to both drug classes, um, does it compromise what we do next? How do we measure the overall benefit um, if we use um, both most effective drug classes up front? Time to first progression won't be the best measure because we may compromise second response. So learning how to optimally use and sequence those combinations. Um, one uh, element that I think we have seen some breakthrough data um, is with a couple of new treatments. Um, the first is with LOXO305. Um, so this is a non-covalent BTK inhibitor, initially um, targeting those with um, BTK resistance mutations. But Anthony Mato presented some really what I thought was stunning data about um, incredible um, durable, sorry, not can't claim durable because it's still short follow-up, but a very high rate of ongoing um, responses in um, approximately two thirds of patients who do uh, respond to that. And that's um, whether they have identified mutations or not. So I think the role of LOXO305 and the non-covalent BTK inhibitors um, has been established at this meeting. Um, and the second is that of um, CAR-T therapy. Um, we've seen updates on a number of trials, um, particularly in combination with BTK inhibitors, because we've seen that T cell health in patients with CLL is compromised and the use of BTK inhibitors, and at the moment, particularly abrutinib, um, during the period of um, um, lymphocyte collection um, and then post-reinfusion, diminishes the rate of... Um, cytokine release syndrome and does appear to enhance um, T cell expansion and probably efficacy. There are very high rates of undetectable MRD in uh, patients with very uh, refractory disease. And if those um, are sustained and durable, I think that will potentially move in those countries where this is deliverable and affordable because it is a complex and expensive therapy. But I do think it will move that therapy earlier in the paradigm particularly for those patients with young, uh, sorry, young patients um, with adverse biologic uh, disease. Um, so the non-covalent BTK inhibitors and cellular immunotherapies broadly, I think are the two um, major steps forward that will have a greater role in 2021 and beyond.